What a masterpiece. What an exquisite display of technique and skill. What an incredible, delicate placement of solder balls. The artist's attention to detail with the ripped pads. The missing components leaving a message for us. It says, we're going to have a lot of fun today. After some extensive cleaning, and I'm talking extensive cleaning, I was finally able to see the extent of the damage. To be honest, things were looking pretty good. This one only had nine ripped pads, so I'd give it a fair chance of surviving the operation. Before I could start to repair any damage though, I had to cause a little bit more. We're going to grind away some of the traces here that were you know, ripped away, and we're going to kind of attach onto those with jumpers in, in somewhat of a similar way that the previous shop did, except we're going to do it better this time where it actually works, it doesn't fall apart when it's done, and it's going to look better too because we're actually going to clean up the flux, and yeah, all right, let's, let's keep going. I'll wipe away some of the magic PCB dust to reveal some nice shiny copper under there. That is pretty. We are going to jump right onto there. All right, on to the thing that gets me quite possibly the most comments on a lot of my repair videos. This is flux that I'm adding. Uh, specifically, this is chip quick, tacky flux. Uh, it's just the kind that I use. I like it. It dries kind of clear. You can use whatever you got. I used to have a flux that smelled like straight up pine sap whenever it was burning. That was a weird one. But we're going to tin these pads and we're going to make them better than before. I got to point out the HDMI port that came out of this console. And I also got to point out the fact that it wasn't the repair shop that broke it. It was the customer again. The repair shop actually did an okay job and fixed it, even though the repair looked like butt. So to fix these forward facing pads, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little jumper thing from a company called Wiley uh, that makes these pre-cut little jumpers. Now, ideally the one that I'm using is meant to be connected to a via instead of a uh, exposed trace, but it's going to work the same. It's, it's going to work just as well. And all I got to do is solder it down onto the uh, pre-tinned pad that I kind of made uh, beforehand. Oddly enough, these are going to sit under the HDMI port and I'll show you how that'll work here in a minute. It's a total of three forward facing or under the port pads that I need to repair and so I'm just going to solder those down, clean those off and what I'll be doing to actually prevent them from grounding because I don't remember if these are ground ones or not. I honestly just don't remember the schematics off the top of my head but I'm going to cover this with some PCB mask and this should effectively shield it from shorting against the HDMI port, the outer shell of it, which is always ground as it goes to the four feet. This is definitely the part that's gonna garner some comments from other repair shops and technicians who are gonna say, Taptic Digital, that's not the right way to be doing this. That's never going to work. Why would you do it like that? You should just do this and this and this. But truth is, I'm just gonna do this because it's fun and I wanna know if it works and it's probably gonna work. So what I've done is I've laid the HDMI port over top of the now masked traces that I've repaired with a little bit of the trace coming out, a little bit of that jumper poking out the front. I'm then gonna wrap that jumper over top of the corresponding pin and I'm going to solder that pin and jumper into one. It's gonna be crazy, but it's gonna work. This is arguably the hardest part about running jumpers, and it's kind of manipulating the copper jumper wire and having it stick where you need it to stick. You gotta bear in mind that we are connecting to very small traces, and the copper wire heats very quickly. So when you attach it to one end and go to attach it to the other, it's very likely that it will disconnect from the first attachment point, because that copper wire has become heated enough to actually melt the solder that's touching it. On the upside, the copper does like to kind of soak that solder up. And it's really starting to feel like a game of operation here, except thankfully there's no buzzer. That thing always scared me as a child. And well, also the caffeine's starting to kick in and my hands are getting a little shaky, but I'm gonna keep jumping on. We just gotta keep connecting jumpers. This thing is gonna work and it's gonna work within the hour. With one final jumper connecting directly onto EG24, this should be ready to roll. I'll reassemble the Xbox about as much as I want to and turn a few screws on camera so it looks good. After that, I'll power it on through methods and take a look. 
we've got a working console again. Thanks for sticking around watching the video. And if you liked it, go ahead and leave a like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. You've been on YouTube before. Just, I don't know, do whatever. Thanks.